know that the health of your children's teeth now will have an impact on them when they are adults. One study found if you have cavities between your molars as a child, your risk of having the same type of cavities in adulthood is nearly 90%. But there are many misconceptions when it comes to keeping kids' teeth healthy. Today, we debunk them. How's your bite feel? Audrey Baywright has been in this chair a lot over the past few months. She's had eight cavities filled, despite what her parents thought were good dental habits. What did we do differently that caused eight cavities to come within six months? Like many parents, the Baywrights weren't aware that good dental health is not just about good dental hygiene. One common myth, cavities form where you can see them. All of Audrey's cavities formed in between her teeth, where sticky, sugary treats got stuck. They don't feel it. So the child's not aware that these foods are stuck between their teeth. Myth number two, brushing is better than flossing. Dr. Keels tells parents if they only do one, it's better to floss. Your tongue acts like a natural brush, but nothing is a substitute for floss. Another myth, babies don't need to go to the dentist. You should have a dental home, no different than a medical home for your child by age one. You should also brush your baby's teeth with water at first, then fluoride toothpaste once they can spit it out. Also, floss as soon as two teeth touch. Myth number four, baby teeth aren't that important because you'll lose them anyway. They're place card holders for the adult teeth underneath them. And if if baby teeth it, rot or have to be have pulled, to permanent it, teeth shift and come in crooked. Another myth, dental health doesn't affect academics. A recent study found children with cavities missed three times as many school days because of pain and did not perform as well. Hey, Mom. Audrey now avoids sticky foods and flosses every day. Because you don't want cavities. Adorable, and something else you need to pay attention to your baby's teeth. They also impact ability to speak properly. So the earlier you start them with these healthy dental habits, the better. And joining us today with more is Dr. Andrea Puttycomb with Diamond State Dentistry. Thank you so much Thank for joining, joining us this afternoon. Now, first of all, they were mentioning in that story that you should have your baby visit the dentist before the age of one. Uh, what can we expect from that visit? Well, usually at the first visit, Dr. Bunting and I bring the child back and the parents. We do an exam in the child's mouth to check for proper growth and development. We look for any abnormalities that we may see, and we also check for cavities. Um, if they let us, we try to brush and polish their teeth. We then talk to the parents about proper diet and nutrition, as well as proper home care. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents don't realize that they should be wiping down their baby's gums with galls after each feeding. And then around six months of age, when the teeth start to erupt, they should then start brushing the teeth with a soft toothbrush and water twice a day usually. And then you can also use um, training toothpaste, which does not have fluoride in it, to keep their teeth nice and clean. Right. Also probably gets them into the habit of brushing every day, twice Correct. a day. Yeah. Now, one thing that I was not aware of until I had children was that you should not put a baby down to sleep with a bottle. It's actually bad for the teeth. Absolutely. Putting a child down to bed with a bottle or sippy cup of anything containing other anything other than water is very bad for the teeth because the sugar containing liquids such as milk or formula or juice coats the teeth and if left, left to sit for a long period of time will cause decay. Mm -hmm. So That's even before the teeth er erupt or the baby teeth? Something? It, they can travel through the gums, so it's a good idea to never never get your child in the habit of going to bed with a bottle. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, it's not just the baby and the children's teeth. Mom and dad need to keep their teeth healthy as well. Absolutely. Parents are a role model for their children, mm -hmm. so parents should set good dental habits and take good care of their teeth so their child will want to take good care of their teeth as well. And cavity-causing bacteria can actually be transmitted through contact, so you want to avoid kissing directly on the mouth as well as sharing utensils with your child. Mm -hmm. Now, when I had my first child, no one told me that you need to take care of your teeth while you're pregnant a little bit, I guess, differently because it can have an impact. Exactly. The hormones that increase during pregnancy, especially progesterone, can make some dental problems worse. Mm -hmm. So, for example, gingivitis, which is an inflammation in the gums that can cause them to be red and tender and bleed easily, occur in about 75% of pregnancies. So more frequent dental cleanings may be needed to help control the gingivitis. If left untreated, it can actually cause more serious forms of gum disease, leading to more problems. And research has actually shown that gum disease has been linked to preterm and 
low birth weight babies, as well as increasing the mother's risk of developing gestational diabetes. Wow, I was not aware of that. And also, I've heard of these, um, these pregnancy tumors gum tumors? Yes, um, they occur in about 10% of pregnancies and what they are are swellings that are located on the gum line usually around the upper front teeth and they're not harmless but they bleed very easily mm -hmm. and they're characterized by a red raw looking mulberry like surface um, and they range in color from a purplish red to a blue. Now once the pregnancy is over they usually regress but they may not go away completely, so your dentist may actually need to numb the area and remove the lesion. Wow, okay, so what should we do if we're expecting a child? What should we do differently? Okay, well, most importantly, you wanna to continue to see your dentist regularly throughout your pregnancy for oral exams as well as cleanings. You also want to make sure you let your dentist know that you're pregnant and any changes in the mouth that may occur. Um, you wanna to continue to brush twice a day and floss every day. Um, you want to also keep a balanced diet and avoid high sugar containing and carb containing snacks, which that increases your risk of tooth decay. Oh, wow. And most importantly, if you're experiencing morning sickness, you want to take a teaspoon of baking soda dissolved in a glass of water and rinse your mouth out immediately afterwards. This will help neutralize the acids in your mouth that cause erosion. Wow, a lot of information, a lot of it I did not know. Thank you so much You're for welcome. joining us this afternoon. And from protecting you and your little one's teeth to protecting their skin. Up next, the truth about sunscreen. Does FPF over 50 really protect you any better? And Brian has a few new friends and he'll tell us how you can hang out with them too. Brian? Well, Lisa, earlier in the summer, the Salisbury Zoo welcomed two new arrivals. They're behind me. They're kind of hiding. They're a little shy. They're called Cotton Top Tamarins. We'll tell you all about them when we come back and we'll introduce you to the babies who right now are latched onto their mother and father. Stay with us. You're watching Delmarva Life. We will be right back.